The Divine Casters, Cleric and Paladin, two iconic classes of 5th edition D&D. These two classes share an ability that presents new players with new challenges, as well as some veteran players in need of a few reminders. This ability is Channel Divinity. Channel Divinity is an odd effect that can confuse new players. Additionally, with the two different kinds of Channel Divinity from the Cleric and the Paladin, it can get a bit confusing on the difference between the two. Let's start off our breakdown by reading what the Cleric gives us in terms of Channel Divinity. At second level, you gain the ability to channel divine energy directly from your deity, using that energy to fuel magical effects. You start with two effects, Turn Undead and an effect determined by your domain. Some domains grant you additional effects as you advance in levels, as noted in the domain description. Alright, so let's stop right there for a second. Already, we are given a really important line of text, using that energy to fuel magical effects. In just the first paragraph, we're given something that becomes very important in the late game, unless your DM is evil and doesn't know how to balance their encounters. Zones of Anti-Magic cancel out Channel Divinity. Spells like Anti-Magic Field and the Anti-Magic Cone from a Beholder will turn off effects and abilities that are magical. This is also true using the same logic for creatures with magical resistance, in that they have advantage on your Channel Divinity saving throw. Some players do tend to forget this, or not even know this crucial part of Channel Divinity, which is presented in both versions of the Cleric and Paladin chapters of the game, with slightly different wording. While Channel Divinity is a magical effect, it is not a spell, so effects like Counterspell and Dispel Magic do not work to counter or dispel effects caused by Channel Divinity. When you use your Channel Divinity, you choose which effect to create. You must then finish a short or long rest to use your Channel Divinity again. And here we have more important text, maybe even more important than the last paragraph. Some players skip over the you choose part of this paragraph, which is very minor but still happens more than you think. But the most important part is when they get this ability back. This is one of your most useful abilities as a cleric, and another tool in your limited tool bag as a paladin. So make sure you remember when you get it back, because it's a feature you don't want to miss out on. Make sure you take short rests to get your abilities back, heal up, and make the warlock feel as powerful as the rest of the party. Some Channel Divinity effects require saving throws. When you use such an effect from this class, the DC equals your Cleric or Paladin spell save DC. This one is fairly self-explanatory. Now, this is where the Paladin and Cleric differ in terms of Channel Divinity. Beginning at 6th level, you can use your Channel Divinity twice between rests, and beginning at 18th level, you can use it three times between rests. When you finish a short or long rest, you regain your expended uses. This is massive, and shows the true power of the Cleric's Channel Divinity. Not to say that the Paladin's abilities are less powerful, in some cases they're even more powerful, hence the limitation. This is probably the most important paragraph on the Cleric page, and something that new players will reference when they build their first Clerics and Paladin. The takeaway from all of this is that your Paladin only has one use of this ability between short and long rests, so use it wisely, especially if you're in a place that will limit the times you can rest. And for Clerics, remember to address the situation before using your Channel Divinity, even when you gain additional uses. I don't know how many times I was saved when our Cleric saved their last Channel Divinity for emergencies only. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this explains some of the questions or problems you were having with Channel Divinity. If you have more questions, please ask them in the comments below, along with any other things you'd like to see in a video in the future. I hope you're all safe out there in these scary and dangerous times, and I hope you're finding a place in D&D. I know I am. Thanks for watching, and stay safe delving into those dungeons, both in real life and in our games.